when you become eighteen, you become always against marriage. But when you were three years of age, you were for marriage, your parents' marriage. So it is for you to consider whether you want to live a life where emotionally you're always looking out for somebody or you settle it in a certain way so that you can use your intelligence and time to create something else. I had this belief or in fact maybe uh, I was made to believe this whole concept of one life, one partner. But now when I see or observe, the whole monogamous relationships do not seem to be existing anymore. The whole idea of it is gone. Uh, <laughs> what you think about it? Oh, uh, it's not gone. Maybe in JNU it's gone <laughs> In the rest of the world, it's not really gone. Even if you… even if you go to United States where there seems to be so much pro pro promiscuity, even there, when people marry, they believe it's for life. But of course, two years later, life gets over <laughs> That's another matter, but when they get married, they believe it's for life. That's why they invest in the diamonds. They think <laughs> it's a lifetime investment. They're putting on that, but unfortunately for all kinds of things, relationships go wrong and one reason they go wrong so easily is because people are meeting much later in their life. See, when people met much younger, when their personalities were not concretized, they met early, seventeen, eighteen, then two people became like one person very easily. Now they're meeting at thirty. Now both are concretized, two concrete blocks. <laughs> but I'm seeing young people, if they marry, they hang on. If people marry over fifty years of age, they hang on because they have again softened up, concrete as again. <laughs> between twenty… between thirty and fifty, it's a bit of a concrete block, you know, strong persona. Now uh, friction happens. Well, if they are wise, they will find something beyond. Well, monogamy and polygamy or whatever kind of gamy, if you want to see. <laughs> the important thing we need to understand is, you know, we are all here, you and me are here. This means a man and woman came together some time ago. Maybe you think they're… think, ah, they're parents, you know, they don't love, they don't uh, do sex, they don't do anything. They're just because a priest uttered a mantra, you were born, probably <laughs> No, it's not like that. Somebody had a physical need, so they handle it through marriage and we are here. When you become eighteen, you become always against marriage. But when you were three years of age, you were for marriage, your parents' marriage. When you were three years of age, were you not glad your parents had a stable marriage? Hello? When you're eighteen, you think of free sex and no marriage and everything. But once again, if you become fifty, fifty-five, then you will look for a relationship that lasts. So it is for you to consider, because it's your life, to consider whether you want to live a life where emotionally you're always looking out for somebody or you settle it in a certain way so that you can use your intelligence and time to create something else your research, your work or whatever you're doing, if emotions and body are settled, actually your ability to use your intelligence will be much better. Otherwise every day you have to walk around to find somebody <laughs> No, I'm not making this any this thing because I feel so bad in United States. People I know, I know, you know there are uh, thousands of people are involved with me now. People over forty, forty-five years of age, women I'm saying, wonderful people. But they are all on this… Uh, these days they've all gone online, otherwise they go sit in a bar and wait. Somebody needs to pick them up today. It's terrible. Tinder generation. I'm sorry? Tinder generation. Whatever you want to call it <laughs> When a woman at forty-five should have been loved and respected in a proper atmosphere, now she's sitting there looking for some strange guy to come her way and she's going to make the judgment in the next ten minutes when he buys her a drink or a dinner or something, this is tragic.
This doesn't mean everybody will go that way, but you must think of the larger well-being. Before you break a social structure, you must think whether we can replace it with a better structure. At any point in our life, let everybody understand this, whether it's a social structure or a political structure or a psychological setup in the society, whatever, before we break it, we must think through whether we have a better alternative system. Without an alternative system, if you break the existing damn thing that's working reasonably well, then it'll go crazy.